Welcome to Addicted to Real Estate TV. On today's episode, we're going to talk about the anatomy of a flip. So stick around, we're going to have a good time. To say you gotta know somebody, or know somebody, to get somewhere these days. To say you know that's alright, yeah that's alright, cause you know that's alright with me. Yeah you know that's alright, yeah that's alright. I'm Phil Falcone, your host of Addicted to Real Estate TV. Today's episode was sponsored by Executech Suites, a 47-unit full-service office building in Huntington Valley that provides everything you need in an office for only $495 a month. Check them out at the website below or you can give them a call at the phone number above, Executech Suites. All right, so today's episode is about the anatomy of a flip. I'm going to go through the details of a flip that I did and uh, you know give you a little idea of what's involved if you haven't done one. Uh, the particular property that I chose to discuss today, because I've done many many flips, is a property I'm going to call the Street Road property. This is a single home, a split level in Warminster right on Street Road and this particular property had multiple uses. It could have been used as a residential home or it could be used as an office because this particular location happened to be zoned professional. So when I bought it, I was thinking that I would use it for myself as a place to run Falcon Real Estate Holding Corporation out of. And I did this deal about five years ago. I found the deal of all places looking in the newspaper. I don't know if you've ever thought of looking for deals in the newspaper, but trust me when I tell you they're there. And the property basically was listed as an auction, a home for sale. And the way the auction worked is you had to put your bid in writing and submit it to an attorney's office. So that's what I did. Uh, the house was thoroughly wasted. And um, I called the attorney. I found out how I can get inside. And the neighbor had the keys. The neighbor let me in. The place was completely destroyed. I'll get to that in a minute. So I put in a bid for $115,000 to buy the house. And I put my bid in writing. And it was supposed to be like reviewed at a certain date. And a certain date came and went. I didn't hear anything. And I happen to drive by this property a lot because I live in the neighborhood. So as I'm driving by it, I couldn't help but notice nobody was working on it. Nobody was working on this property. And uh, after about eight months, nine months went by, I finally called up the, the attorney and I said, what's going on? I mean, uh, did anybody win this auction or not? And he had originally told me somebody did, but apparently they didn't settle on it. And he did nothing with it. He was sitting on it for nine months. So I told him, I will, why didn't you call me? <laughs> he didn't even call me. I said, well, I'll reinstitute my bid for 150 Make a long story short, I got the property. Um, this particular property was a mess like no other property I've ever seen. It basically was about 30 years old, and it looked like no one had fixed a damn thing in the house since the day it was built. Um, there were holes in the roof the size of bowling balls. I mean, it l literally looked like a pirate ship had gone down Street Road and fired cannonballs at the house. There were holes in the roof so big, you could put a ladder up and stand and poke your head right out the roof. Some of the holes had uh, blue tarps over them. Some of them didn't. The ones that didn't, you can imagine it was raining for years inside the house. And the house, po portions of the house, it was a split level, so portion of the house sat about four or five feet above the ground with a crawl space underneath of it. Well, the wood in the flooring underneath had been rotted out so big there was like a four foot to six foot diameter hole uh, underneath where these cannonball holes were. And the wood was so rotted out, termites, they eat wet wood. There were so many termites there that they didn't even run when I was there. It was amazing. I sat, I actually stood in, picture me standing inside this crawl space with the wood floor somewhere around this level with this giant hole and I'm ripping out the floorboards and these termites they didn't even run away they just sat there uh, they basically made it known like you know they didn't even care uh, just house was a complete wreck there was two feet of vegetation growing out of the gutters in the roof there was a shed out back that I knocked down with a screwdriver like this boom and the whole shed just fell down Anyway, this house was wasted. Um, I spent four months there, and uh, sometimes I hire crews to do my flips, but I am a construction guy, and during this particular time frame of my life, I decided to do the renovation myself. I did bring in some contractors to help me with a few things, but I did most of it myself. It took four months. I spent $65,000 on the house. 
So um, I got 115 into the property plus some closing costs. I put 65,000 into the deal. So uh, what's that? So you know, 185. I had about 185 into this deal, and uh, I spent four months of my life working there. And uh, I put the house up for sale, and I basically sold it for 320 thousand dollars. Great, great deal for me. Uh, one of the best that I've ever done in a flip. I don't want you to think that flips you make over 100 grand off of every flip you do. You don't. I've done plenty of them where I've only made uh, five or ten or. 20 grand and you know I kind of shoot for 25 is a number I like to try to get but you know market conditions affect different things uh, during the four months that I did this project uh, I had to work with the township a lot because when you're doing construction especially when you have a highly visible house on street road you better be dealing with the township oh they were they were coming around all the time uh, making sure that I had permits for everything I actually filled out for 11 permits but uh, technically speaking, I needed 12. And when they found out that I didn't have the 12th permit, uh, they shut me down for a week, which I thought was absolutely ridiculous. Clearly, if I got 11 out of 12 permits, I'm somebody who's trying to work with the township. But uh, you know, this is the kind of stuff you're gonna have to deal with if you're gonna do flips. Um, the contractors that I worked with were terrific guys, people I've known for years. I had a guy come in and do the ceramic tile, I had a plumber come in, I had a roofer come in, I had a guy do the windows and the siding, I did all the sheetrock, the cosmetic work, kitchens, bathrooms, and all that other stuff. So uh, after four months I put the house up for sale, I'm a licensed real estate agent, so I sold the house for 320 grand. Great deal. So. I wanted to kind of walk through the process of what can happen on a flip. Typically, the best deals you find for a flip are found uh, in oddball places. You're probably not going to find the best deals on the MLS. I find plenty of them on the MLS. But the best deals sometimes are found when you know the seller directly or when you do a marketing campaign directly to the seller or uh, possibly in a newspaper like this deal. But you can see the kind of money that sometimes you can really hit a home run on flips. Uh, in this market, it, you know, 25 grand is the number that I use, and I try to keep my housing prices low. Typically speaking, I don't do flips that are going to be sold for $320,000 at the end. I try to keep my final sale number around 250000 or under. I like small properties when I'm doing flips because if I end up getting stuck with it, then I can probably rent it and still make some money. But if you got one that's 300000 plus, sometimes it's hard to rent those babies. Anyway, uh, that was a short uh, explanation of one of my favorite flips, a street road property. And I'll, I'll tell you some other goofy stuff that happened on this property. Uh, like I said, this house was sitting there for 30 years. Nobody ever fixed anything on it. And uh, during the time that we were working on it, uh, the roofers kind of got started early one morning working at 6.30 in the morning, and uh, one of the neighbors didn't like that. I can appreciate that. I mean, contractors shouldn't be starting at 6.30 in the morning. But uh, <clears throat> later on towards the end of the job, one of the trucks that had come to the house accidentally uh, just r drove his tire slightly over the lawn of the neighbor and put a little dent in it. And the neighbor, much to my surprise, came over to the house flipping out on me. And uh, I said, you got to be freaking kidding me. Uh, this house is sitting here, this piece of crap, for 30 years. I put 65 grand of my own money and four, uh, four months of my life into fixing up this house. You're bitching and moaning about a little dent in your lawn? Go to damn Home Depot and buy a $2 bag of topsoil and throw some grass seed on it. Uh, this little twerp <laughs> went down to the township and complained about me. And it's just amazing to me sometimes the, um, the lack of respect that us real estate investors, us entrepreneurs get. People just don't get it, man. We're coming into your town. We're spending money. We're putting good quality people into places. We're fixing up the houses. We're improving the values of your home. Uh, this little knucklehead uh, didn't deserve to have me uh, working on his house next to him. What he should have been doing is bringing me over a gold medal, thanking me for making his house worth 25000 more than it was. But, you know, that's, that's life. That's business. If you'd like to read more about this particular flip, you can check out my book addicted to real estate why i can't stop and why you should start 
And you can buy my book or check it out at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two, addictedtorealestate.com. I also have free investor forums, a free web TV show you can sign up for, and lots of other great blogs on there that you can check out, the latest and greatest things that I'm up to. I got a radio show. I'm putting out all kinds of content to help my investor friends because this is an amazing time in the real estate market. So you better get busy and start doing something about it instead of just sitting around talking about real estate. Let's get busy, start buying. I'm Phil Falcone from Addicted to Real Estate and thanks for watching.